A vector is a line segment with special attributes. We will examine two attributes common to all vectors. A vector has magnitude, which is a fancy word for size or length. And secondly, a vector has direction. We're going to look at a vector and observe these characteristics. Here's a drawing of the first vector we'll look at. This is what a graphed vector looks like, an arrow. We'll call this vector, vector u. Vectors are often named as lowercase bold letters. Sometimes you'll see the vector written as a bold lowercase letter with a little line segment over it. Instead of line segment, it can also be a little arrow. And we place the coordinates of vector u as 7, 6. Note that instead of a parentheses surrounding the coordinates, we have angular brackets. The angular brackets signify that this arrow is a vector. Alternatively, vectors can be labeled by the starting and finishing point letters with a little arrow on top of the letters. This is the same vector as u, but labeled vector PQ. Back to the vector labeled u. The ends of the vector have names. The finishing point of a vector is called the head or tip of the vector. And the starting point of the vector is called the tail of the vector. How can the magnitude or size of vector u be determined? To determine the magnitude of a vector, we can use the distance formula, which is a coordinate plane application of the Pythagorean theorem. We can also do this by breaking this vector into a right triangle. This vector has a horizontal component of 7 and a vertical component of 6 in length. And here we have entered in the calculator the square root of quantity 7 squared plus 6 squared. We press enter and find our magnitude. The magnitude is about 9.22 units rounded to the nearest hundredth place. And so we now show that the vector has a magnitude of about 9.22 units. This vector u can be resolved into horizontal and vertical component vectors. And here the horizontal and vertical components are drawn as component vectors on the horizontal and vertical axes. The horizontal component vector can be labeled u sub x. That little subscript x lower, lower to the right, that's u sub x. And a vertical component vector can be labeled u sub y. We can also use the bracket numerical notation. The horizontal component is 7 comma 0 in brackets. And a vertical component is 0 comma 6 in brackets. What we have done here is resolve the vector into its horizontal and vertical components. These are also called rectangular components. Now we'll turn to the second characteristic of a vector, its direction. There are a lot of ways to express the direction of a vector, so many that we certainly will not handle all of them in this lesson, but to start out we'll call this angle, symbolized by the Greek letter theta, the measure of the angle rotated from the positive side of the x-axis. If this topic is where you are now in your pre-calculus or trigonometry course, the way to determine this angle should be pretty fresh on your mind. Since we have all sides of this right triangle, we can use any one of the six basic trigonometric ratios. Just to pick one ratio, we'll use the information we had at the beginning, the knowledge that the opposite side of the angle theta is 6 and that the adjacent side of the triangle is 7. Therefore, the tangent of the angle is the fraction 6 sevenths. Therefore, the angle theta equals the inverse tangent or arc tangent of 6 sevenths. Some of my students like to mistakenly call this tan negative 1. We can enter this expression into our calculator as shown. When we press enter, this is what we get. 40.60 degrees, rounded to the nearest hundredth place. And here the measure of the angle theta is labeled. Now we'll do something else. Let's look at this second vector, the vector labeled v. All we have is a vector with magnitude and direction. We don't even have uh, coordinate grid squares with which to work. This, th this is vector v that has a magnitude of 10. The vector is also elevated from the x-axis on the left side at an angle of 60 degrees. What we'll do with this is called resolving the vector. Resolving means to break or separate a vector into two components, into x and y components. Sometimes you will hear these components called rectangular components. 
The x rectangular component is found by multiplying the magnitude of the vector by the cosine of the direction angle. So the x rectangular component, which we call v sub x, is the magnitude of the vector 10, which is 10, times the cosine of the angle of direction, which will be the cosine of 60 degrees. Maybe you know that the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half or 0.5, but in case you don't remember that, here the numbers are entered in the calculator. And pressing enter, we find that v sub x equals 5. And so we make the notation that v sub x equals 5. So we draw in the rectangular component v sub x equals 5, going off to the right. But looking at the drawing of the vector, does this make sense? v sub x goes away from vector v. It's going to the right. It's in the wrong direction. No, that's not right. Vector v sub x should really go to the left. The problem is that the angle alpha is not really 60 degrees. This, starting in quadrant 1, is really the angle alpha, 120 degrees, rotated from the positive side of the x-axis. So instead we really have v sub x equals 10 times the cosine of 120 degrees. And here's 10 times the cosine of 120 degrees entered in the calculator. Press enter. This time we see that v sub x is negative 5 units of magnitude. And so this is the component vector v sub x just going to the left instead of to the right. Looking now at the vertical component vector we have v sub y equals 10 times the sine of 120 degrees. And we place this expression into our calculator. Press enter. We get about 8.66. This is really 10 times the square root of 3. So we write y v sub y is approximately equal to 8.66. And we can now draw the vertical component vector v sub y. These items again we call rectangular components. We've gone over elementary terminology on vectors. Next we'll go into some real world uses of vectors with examples that show how they can be helpful. There are many, many uses of vectors, but we'll just look briefly at three of them in this lesson. First we'll look at the use of vectors in determining and describing forces. Then we'll look at the use of vectors in navigation. And finally, we'll look at the use of vectors in describing projectile motion. First, let's take a look at me, sitting on the piano bench at home while making this video. The weight of my body is approximately 190 pounds, and it's attracted toward the center of the Earth by gravity, and I exert a 190-pound force on the piano bench. This downward force can be represented on a coordinate plane by this vector pointing downward. We'll call this vector w, and it's numerically represented by 0, comma, negative 190 enclosed within angular brackets. But to keep me sitting on the piano bench, there's another force at work as well, and that force is described by Newton's third law of motion. When a first body exerts a force f sub 1 on a second body, the second body simultaneously exerts a force f sub 2 equals negative f sub 1 on the first body. This means that f sub 1 and f sub 2 are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And what is this force keeping me in place? That force from the panel bench upon what I'm sitting is upwards and is represented by this green upward arrow. This will be called vector p and it is numerically represented with 0, 190 within angular brackets. To find the net effect of these two forces, we add vectors w and p. We add the numbers like this. Here they are separated by a plus sign. The vector representing their sums will have an x value of 0 plus 0, which equals 0, and the y value of the vector will be the sum of negative 190 and 190. So the sum of these two vectors is 0 comma 0. This is what we call an algebraic method of adding vectors. Another way we can add vectors is by placing these vectors head to tail or tip to tail. And we see that the net effect is the same, that the sum of these two vectors is a vector described as 0, 0. This is an almost absurdly simple example, but in engineering we can use the same principles 
to support bridges and other structures to account for forces or likely forces on structures. This is a graphical method of adding vectors. And we box in our answer that vector w plus vector p equals 0 comma 0. Now we'll look at another use of vectors, navigation. You'll often see this in plane flights, how the prevailing winds change the speed and direction of flight. You can also see this with boats reacting to water currents. For this example, we'll have a plane flying northward at a speed of 500 miles per hour at that heading. What would be the plane's speed and direction if the plane encounters a west wind blowing at 50 miles per hour? Here is the vector representing the plane going north heading at 500 miles per hour. We call this vector p and the numbers we use are the pair 0, 500 inside angular brackets. And from the west we have our wind vector. We call this vector w and identify it by the pair 50, 0 placed within angular brackets. Graphically, we can move the tail of the vector w to the tip of vector p. And with these two vectors added together, and this new vector is vector p plus w. The numbers representing this vector are 50, 500 within angular brackets. And to find the magnitude, it's the Pythagorean theorem again, the square root of quantity 500 squared plus 50 squared. Press enter. We get a magnitude of about uh, 502.5 miles per hour. So we can label the magnitude of the vector p plus w. And we want to find the angle the plane will be moved away from the north heading, so we label the angle we're looking for as theta. And in this right triangle, the opposite side is 50 miles per hour, and the adjacent side of this right triangle is 500 miles per hour. And using the tangent ratio and the inverse tangent relation, we get theta equals the inverse tangent of 50 over 500. And here it is entered into our calculator. We press enter and get an angle of approximately 5.71 degrees. And finally we describe the angle in terms of direction and that's east of north. So we have 5.71 degrees east of north. And we box in our correct answer. The reason we could use the Pythagorean theorem was because the wind vector was horizontal. If that wind vector had not been horizontal, we would have had to uh, do something else, perhaps use the law of cosines. And we're going to tackle that situation in an upcoming lesson. In launching an object to flight, we can take a close look at an initial angle of incidence. Now this blue ray in designates the initial firing or launching magnitude and angle or direction of the object. And the coordinates of this vector are 5, 11. Now to analyze this direction and magnitude, we will measure the drawing of the ray against the coordinate grid shown here. And there are other notations available to show that a line segment is a vector. I've seen it in angular brackets like this. A vector has two attributes, magnitude and direction. In fact, that's a definition of a vector. It's a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Magnitude, as I mentioned earlier, is another word for length. And on a coordinate plane, it has another definition. It's an ordered pair whose geometric representation is an arrow. This vector can be separated into vertical and horizontal components. The vertical component is 11 units up, and the horizontal component is 5 units to the right. To find the size or magnitude, we again find the length, and to do that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So we would find the magnitude by taking the square root of 5 squared plus 11 squared, both of those together, and that's going to be a little over 12, about 12.083. If we knew the angle of incidence from the horizontal, we could use trigonometry to rewrite our vertical and horizontal components of the vector. The angle of incidence happens to be about 65.556 degrees. I found this angle by taking the inverse tangent or arc tangent of 11 over 5. And now with a magnitude of 12.083 and an angle of incidence of 65.556 degrees up from horizontal, we, we can rewrite the vertical and horizontal components of our vector as follows. The vertical component is 12.083 times the sine 
of 65.556 degrees and the horizontal component is 12.083 times the cosine of 65.556 degrees. Now we'll look at some problems. Problem 1. Uh, below is the drawing of a vector representing the force from gravity on a 5 pound brick. Which of the vectors in the answer choices is needed to support the weight of the brick? I invite the viewer to stop the video and try to work out this problem, then restart the lesson the video to see if you got it right. The correct answer is B, because the answer B represents an upward vector that balances out the downward force from the weight of the brick. Problem 2. Vector U and vector V are shown on the coordinate plane below. Which of the answer choices represents vector U plus V? Stop the lesson, work the problem, then restart to see if you got it right. The correct answer is D, the vector 6, 0. There are different ways to work this one out, but if we place the vectors together tip to tail, we add the vectors together. And here, the transposed vector V is in dashed form is placed at the end of vector U, and the end of the vector U plus V is at the point 6, 0. Problem 3. A plane is flying at a heading due north for 600 miles during one hour. During the flight north, there is a 100 mile per hour wind blowing to the east. After one hour, how far is the plane from its starting point? Stop the lesson, work the problem, then restart to see if you got it right. The correct answer is D, 608 miles. This is really a Pythagorean theorem problem. We take the square root of quantity 600 squared plus 100 squared and get a little over 608 miles. Problem 4. For vector u shown below, what are its component rectangular vectors? Stop the lesson, work the problem, and restart to see if you got it right. The correct answer is A. Problem 5. For a vector representing a ship traveling to the southwest, where will the tip or head of the representative vector be located? Stop the lesson, work the problem, and restart to see if you got it right. The correct answer is C, quadrant 3. Quadrant 3 is the lower left quadrant, and that's where a ship going to the southwest will be headed. This has been Vectors 101. Thanks for viewing.